Stan Jubilisco here, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, to show you the functional basics of an antenna known as a cubical quad, commonly used from approximately 14 megahertz up to the 2 meter ham band or 144 to 148 megahertz. Uh, I'm not giving exact dimensions here, but generally speaking the driven element should be one full electrical wavelength in circumference and it turns out that a full wavelength loop like this uh, has a an electrical uh, length that's uh, a little bit longer than a full wavelength in free space approximately four percent longer the reflector uh, for the antenna should be about five percent larger in circumference than the driven element. Uh, the proportions will vary depending of course on the frequency uh, but the, a good supporting structure is uses metal or wooden struts connected by a boom like this and uh, your master tower like that and a rotator here which I have not shown but it is a unidirectional antenna maximum radiation and response as shown here from the reflector through the driven element like that. It receives best from the right and transmits best towards the left in this particular diagram. The antenna itself is rather fragile and can't be expected to withstand some of the more severe ice and wind storms that a simpler antenna such as a Yagi can withstand. However, it offers approximately 2 dBd gain over a Yagi antenna having the same number of elements. As for design parameters at any particular frequency, I recommend you browse the internet and or consult the Venerable ARRL Handbook for Radio Communications, published annually by the American Radio Relay League. There is none better. So that's just what a quad looks like and why it's called a cubical quad. Well, I guess if you connect these four corners with straight lines, you get something on the order of a cube. Uh, cubical quad. It just got that name and it stuck. Stan Jubilisco W1GV saying 73 and so long, which translates in my native fist to da 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 da.